Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, this is uh, Conduct's presentation on centralized approach, combining performance and medical tools to strengthen development strategies in NSOs. Uh, my name is Kevin Forbes. I'm Conduct's innovation manager, and I'll be uh, your moderator today. Um, this session will last for 45 minutes with some time for questions at the end. Uh, if this is your first time using the Demio platform, uh, we'll be having some polls and uh, questions. Uh, they're available in the chat on the, uh, the right-hand side. The questions are private, uh, so you won't be viewed by the whole webinar audience, but uh, please feel free to file any questions throughout the, uh, throughout the session. There'll also be some polls available, uh, and so be sure to check those out and vote as they get posted throughout the session as well. Uh, this session will be recorded, uh, and so at the end of the session, you will get a uh, copy of the recording in your email. And uh, as uh, we go through, also just keep in mind that uh, you'll be able to uh, minimize the video uh, and focus on the slides uh, once uh, the video portion starts up, if uh, that's of interest to you. So with all that said, uh, I'd like to introduce Matt English um, as our presenter today. Matt it was born and raised in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He started playing sports at a young age. He was fortunate enough to play in national championships across three different sports of hockey, soccer, and sprint canoe kayak. And he continues today to be an avid skier, runner, and most recently a road cyclist. Uh, after graduating from Dalhousie University, where he played four years of varsity hockey, Matt pursued a project focused in healthcare to help better manage his type 1 diabetes. Since his diagnosis almost 15 years ago, Matt has seen firsthand the advancements in healthcare technology relating to the monitoring and data management of that disease. Now, having brought that perspective to the world of athlete management here at Conduct almost five years ago, Matt has worked across a number of different roles with Conduct client support, account management, product development, and solutions engineer, and now he spearheads our Olympic efforts, as well as our enterprise accounts in leagues, players associations, and other sport brands. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Matt, and he'll take you through our presentation for today. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, really excited to be uh, speaking with everyone today. So just want to say thanks again, everybody, for joining. Um, this is actually Conduct's first webinar, so uh, congratulations, you've made it to the first one. Uh, we are really excited to have everybody here today. It's nice to see that we've actually got folks joining from all over the world um, and across a multitude of different roles and responsibilities and sports. So I'm really excited to try to touch on uh, a bunch of different use cases and examples that hopefully resonate with people on the line. Um, and yeah, really excited to dive into it a little bit further. Um, of course, we are an athlete management system or a human performance system, and we're really proud to be working with over 550 professional elite teams worldwide. Of course, a majority of those are the Olympic organizations that we work with, um, as well as those professional teams in North America and, and beyond. Um, so we've got a, a few listed here, and you can see a few probably on the wall behind me as well. Um, and I'm sure we've got a few folks from some of these organizations, uh, organizations on, the, on the call today. Um, we're also really proud to be um, closely related to a lot of the different sports technology companies um, that exist right now in the marketplace. Uh, we've been able to build these deep relationships with these companies over the last 10 plus years uh, over Conduct's lifetime. And so um, this is a big component of what we're gonna be talking about today as well, but um, just wanted to highlight uh, some of these integration partners that we have and we really respect and appreciate uh, all, all of what they do in, in, in helping support elite athletes as well. So I think really just to identify kind of the objectives for today's call, um, it's it's not just to give a product demonstration. Um, and I think I want to just make that clear because instead really what we're looking to do is showcase the problems that these organizations in the Olympic world are facing and highlight some of those ways that um, they've implemented solutions to address those challenges. Um, so again, really focusing on kind of use cases and how we can implement something to solve those challenges. Um, now, with that said, we will have a few uh, examples and screenshots throughout the presentation to try to highlight exactly what that workflow kind of looks like inside of Conduct. Um, but this would be all uh, presentation based. We won't be doing a live demonstration. So I would definitely um, love to talk to anybody who would like to see a live demonstration after the event. Please reach out, obviously. Um, and as uh, Forbes, you mentioned earlier, we'll be able to go through and answer any of these questions um, throughout the presentation. So please drop a note in the in the chat um, and take a, uh, keep an eye out for the polls that exist as well, because we'll be touching on some of those. So I think with that, we'll just start jumping right into it. Um, what we want to look at here today and, and part of what I want to identify are the different challenges faced uh, across the organization as a whole, but also those individual roles and responsibilities 
um, that exist within the, the, the Olympic organization. So if we looked at some of the common challenges that we see at the organizational level, they kind of, they kind of filter down into uh, five or six different components here. So the first one being the decentralized athletes that you deal with. Um, so these athletes, as we know, in an, in an Olympic environment can be uh, spread out across the country depending on the time of year. So if you have a, a national championship event where all of the athletes come together for that tournament and then after the tournament they take off and go back to their professional teams or university teams, um, that decentralization causes a lot of challenges uh, for these national sporting organizations. So that's something that they need to address. Um, another big component, and I think it goes without saying, but the security requirements and the privacy standards that need to be in place when you're collecting private uh, health information on individuals. Uh, I think it goes without saying, like we said, that um, everything needs to be uh, secure and only being able to be shared to those who are supposed to see it. So having those roles and permissions set up within the platform um, is, is vital. And ultimately, a lot of the challenges that these organizations face today are that they don't have a secure method of collecting this information. You're either using Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets, uh, pen and paper. Um, this is where they, the challenge really stems from and that's where they're trying to uh, uh, collect all of that information in one secure spot. Um, kind of shifting gears a little bit from the common challenges that we see about, a big one is really like that fear of implementation. So how are we going to implement a new technology uh, strategy when it comes to athlete monitoring? Um, as you can imagine, as with any change management, it's, it always comes with its pros and cons and you've got folks that are going to be uh, diving in feet first and others that are a lot more hesitant. So you have to be uh, definitely aware of, of your organization's situation there. And I think it's also important to mention that the fear of implementation um, can happen on both ends of the spectrum in terms of a small organization that's brand new to the world of athlete management. They're a little bit unsure. They might not have the staff in place yet to know exactly how to, how to approach this. And on the other end of the spectrum, you might have an organization that's extremely advanced, but it's also really complicated and complex because of how large the organization is, which lends itself to a whole different set of implementation challenges, of course. Um, and a big part of that is, is the fact that there are so many roles and requirements um, within the organization itself. And, and ultimately what they're trying to do is improve the cross collaboration between those different departments, whether it's medical performance, tactical, uh, integrated support team leads, more administrative components, all of those things need to be uh, improved in a system like this in order for it to be valuable. And if we shift gears a little bit from what was an organizational challenge more into um, a medical challenge, um, so for the, the medical staff roles in particular, um, this is where we look at things such as injury and treatment tracking. So we know that it's a requirement from a lot of the medical staff, obviously, that are working with the Olympic athletes who are maybe carded or otherwise. It's really important for them to be able to quickly and easily log injuries and treatments. As part of that as well, you're also going to come across um, the situation where, as I mentioned before, you've got decentralized athletes who may also be competing on other teams at, at other parts of the year. So I think of basketball as an example. You pull in a basketball player for a world championship event. Um, after the event, they, they go back to a professional team overseas. Well, it's really nice to be able to provide those teams with an exit medical report. Here's what happened to the athlete when they were under our care. And so quickly automating that system for them is, is a really common need and, and core requirement uh, that we see quite often. Um, if we look at actually the types of data that they might also be collecting, um, things like pre-participation exams. So what's, you know, do you have allergies? What's your medical history? Who are the emergency contacts that we need to get in touch with? Um, all of that kind of information so that you can quickly get, capture that at the beginning of the season, let's say, um, and make sure that it gets distributed to the folks in your organization who need to know about that information. Um, really simple ways that we need to do that um, if we're going to do this successfully. Same with movement assessments or nutrition and supplement tracking. So again, if we're looking more at a biomechanical standpoint or a dietitian and nutrition standpoint, how can we collect some of that information as well? And then all of this really kind of whittles itself down to the fact that, hey, one, we need to make sure that if we're collecting this injury and treatment information, and two, if we're expecting our staff to actually log all of this information, then we need to have a flexible analysis tool so that we can actually take advantage of the data that we're collecting. So this means being able to have your medical data alongside your performance data to make sure that you're actually understanding and maybe 
uh, eventually able to start diving in a little bit more uh, in depth into the data that you're actually looking at and maybe seeing what led to a potential injury. Um, was there something that we could have changed in their practice plans? Is there anything that we could have done differently from a return to play protocol standpoint to improve upon that return to play uh, uh, program for an athlete that was coming back from an injury? And lastly, we hear this over and over again, we need a simple workflow. Um, we know that staff at these Olympic organizations are generally overworked as it is uh, and understaffed. So a big component to getting that buy-in is creating a simple workflow. So that's a really, really common request that we hear about, of course. If we look at a different role within the organization, so maybe a performance staff role, um, this is where we see a lot more of the in-depth, um, you know, performance, sports performance data being collected. So things like daily check-ins is a, is a really common and simple one that we hear about a lot. Um, quite often there's carded athletes who need to be um, monitored daily in order for them to remain on a card. So we know that. So again, we need to be able to solve that with a really easy, uh, simple solution. Um, again, we'll show you some examples of this, of how that's being used uh, with our teams uh, in a minute. We also hear a lot about load monitoring. So the concept of load monitoring is probably, uh, if you're on a performance team right now, you're probably familiar with this, whether it's an acute chronic workload ratio or uh, an exponentially weighted moving average. Um, load monitoring is generally a, a component of the, the type of data that you are um, capturing on an athlete to ensure that they are staying kind of in that prime readiness zone, as we would call it. Physiological testing or fitness testing is obviously a huge component. Um, being able to understand not only where your high performance or national team athletes are sitting, um, but also where your kind of next gen athlete or your talent pool, where do they sit and what are those benchmarks that you need them to hit in order to, um, you know, essentially be looked at for that national team. So being able to set those standards and benchmarks in place. Um, if you're a Canadian group on the call, it's maybe gold medal profiling or something of that nature. Uh, is a really great uh, opportunity for these uh, performance staff. Um, the last couple here that I have are, you know, really talking about the sports technology integration. We mentioned that we have over 50 different partners that we integrate uh, data from. Um, again, that's more on the uh, on the experience side of an organization. So if you are really experienced with athlete management and human performance, you've probably introduced some form of sports technology, whether it's a GPS system, a force plate, um, a body fat measurement tool of some kind. There's all kinds of different stuff out there that exists. So being able to integrate those different things, no matter what it is that you're using, is obviously a common request for us. And because of that, we also get the request that, hey, we're using X, Y, and Z. So we need some custom reporting capabilities um, to match either the sport that we're dealing with, either matching the coaching staff that we have. So whether they're uh, analytical focused or maybe a little bit more old school, you need to adjust the types of reports that you're actually giving to them. And same thing goes for the delivery of programming to kind of help close the loop. How are we going to now correct some of the stuff that we've identified in this data that we've collected? How can we close that loop and actually improve on those? So the delivery of whether it's strength conditioning programming, rehab programming, skills programming, um, that's a big component as well. And then lastly, and, and maybe the most important piece on the whole page is really the athlete engagement perspective. So how can we engage our athletes to create that buy-in? Um, and also how can we avoid what might be referred to as input burnout or survey burnout? So if you're asking them questions every day, how can we avoid um, that from happening where you start getting uh, inaccurate results maybe from the athlete? But again, trying to engage the athletes, uh, trying to get them to buy into whatever program or, or um, system that you're trying to put in place here as well. Um, the last group that I, that I wanted to touch on here um, from a kind of a coaching staff or a, a roles and responsibilities standpoint is more of the tech, uh, excuse me, tactical coaching staff. Um, so this is more of your actual sport coaches, let's say. Um, so maybe they're a head coach or an assistant coach or something along those lines. Um, and really the types of questions that they're asking or the things that they're looking for are things such as a player status, like who's available to practice or play today? Who should I be keeping an eye on in practice? Um, and right now we hear that a lot uh, from, from coaches that they're doing a lot of text messages back and forth to their athletic therapists. How's this player's rehab progressing? Those types of questions. So creating a more centralized spot for that information to live to improve those efficiencies and communication is obviously a big request. 
Um, the tactical coaches are also generally more interested in looking at in-game statistics um, alongside some of the information that the other coaches might be providing to them. Um, so that's another component that we hear a lot of. Um, can I get my competition stats? Can I get my shooting percentages? All of those different pieces obviously uh, go into this. Uh, kind of relating back actually to that player status about who's available to practice and who's not. Well, from the group that's available to practice, what is their readiness to train? What does what their battery charge look like as some folks refer to it as? Um, and that can obviously be made up of a bunch of different metrics, whether that's looking at um, HRV or sleep or some of those more cognitive metrics, or maybe it's looking at the, the load monitoring perspective. All of those things can contribute to a kind of an overall battery charge. And that's really important for your head coaches in particular to understand um, so that they have a better understanding of what the athlete's doing and, and potentially why they're performing a certain way. And then the last few here are really just kind of general um, in terms of these coaches are generally looking for the weekly, monthly, or seasonal review of, of some type of data that they're collecting. And that varies, again, based on the sport that you're talking about, based on the time of year, based on the type of event that can change throughout the course of a year. So it's important to just have that flexibility to provide them the digestible information that they need. Um, so again, very common request there. And then the last two I think are just important. It's, it's been something that we've been seeing a lot more of recently actually is um, just the concept of like asking an athlete, you know, what kind of goals do you have for the year? What are you looking to approve upon? Um, and then also measuring what types of sessions they're actually doing throughout the year. So that when you sit down with an athlete, you can say, hey, look, here's where you set your goals to be. Um, but now we're seeing that you're spending all of your time in a completely different area. You're working on something that you're already really good at, which is really common with athletes. Uh, let's focus on the stuff that you're not good at, right? And get back to the goals that you've set. So again, that information existing somewhere where it's easy to refer back to and also to use that information for those player meetings that you're actually going to have. Um, it helps lead to a better one-on-one -on -one meeting essentially. So um, before I jump into this use case really quickly, um, what I do want to look at is a couple of the um, polls that are coming out. So I'm just going to scroll through here and see. Um, so one of the questions that we posed was, what is the primary challenge you face uh, working in your industry? So decentralized athletes, talent ID, budget constraints, or siloed and unorganized information. As you can see, actually the top two answers are probably the most common ones that I hear when I'm talking to folks as well. It's that decentralization component and the fact that the information is generally unorganized um, and siloed and it exists with the wrong people at the wrong time potentially. That actually leads really well into this use case that we've done uh, with Hockey Canada. Um, so we're really proud obviously to work with Hockey Canada. I was a hockey player growing up, so that's always nice to be involved with these guys. Um, but really the challenge that they had was trying to monitor those decentralized athletes all across the country. As you can imagine, it's a big country uh, and you've got folks in many different regions. Um, so trying to track all of their performance, wellness and injury information was a challenge in the past. Um, they also had a huge requirement obviously with the security and, and data privacy. So that was obviously kind of a, a, a line item that had to be addressed as well. So by implementing something like Conduct's technology, where we were integrating, um, whether it was a GPS system, we were doing daily check-in surveys, and their athletic therapists are actually recording all of their medical uh, injury and treatment data through uh, our system as well. That allowed them to actually improve the workflows that they have day in and day out, um, improve some efficiencies, hopefully save them some time in the long run as well. Um, and that outcome, again, was now that we've collected that information in one spot, we're better able to assess it, visualize it, and intervene at the right times. Um, that might mean at the end of the year, taking a review of that information and seeing what we could do differently or what approach could we take differently or uh, it, it, the reverse, uh, what did we do really well? Um, where did we see some improvements from years past? Um, I'm going to jump into the next use case, but maybe before I do that, I know there was another poll here as well. Um, I'm just gonna take a look at one of the other ones. So what is the driving need for implementing athlete management systems in your organization? Uh, wellness monitoring, injury tracking and rehab, data consolidation and analysis and team scheduling and communication. Um, yeah, again, not surprised to see what response was most uh, answered here was the data collection and analysis. Almost 63% of you actually answered that. 
Um, and I think that that's actually a great tie into this, uh, in, in particular, this one uh, with the LA Dodgers. Um, really, the reason we threw this in, I know they're not an Olympic organization, but they're actually really similarly structured to an Olympic organization in some ways, in terms of they've got um, a massive uh, talent pool of athletes that they look at. They've got a lot of decentralized athletes. So you think, of course, you've got your major league team, but then they've got all of their affiliate teams that exist across the country and even into other countries as well. So implementing that performance or medical program across these hundreds or thousands of athletes was a, was a huge challenge for them. Um, we've been working with the Dodgers for, I think, close to seven years now, something like that. Um, and so over that course of time, they've, they've obviously added new components uh, each year, but it's really allowed them to improve that sharing and tracking of the KPIs or key performance indicators um, to better optimize that development path for their athletes. So again, centralizing this information, producing more standardized reports, benchmarks to, for expectations for athletes. All of that stuff has obviously ultimately led to them being a, a World Series champion here recently. Um, and they're just one of the leading organizations, I think, in this industry as a whole. So we're really proud to be working with them and have their input uh, as we go ahead and, and create new products. So, um, that was really an overview of some of the challenges that we hear about, whether it's the organization or those individual roles themselves. And what I want to get into next here is actually walking through some screenshots. Again, um, we're not going to be doing this as a live demo. I would love to do that with any of you, like I said, after this to show you exactly what those workflows look like. But for the sake of the webinar and our time crunch here, I just want to make sure that we had some of the key things and, and also looking at what the solutions they've implemented were for each of these. So we'll look at the roles and permissions and the org structure. It's a little bit boring, but I just wanted to touch on that quickly so that you have a good understanding of how it works. And then we'll talk a little bit more about how staff would be collecting performance data or medical data or reviewing those dashboards um, that are really flexible and customizable. And then finish with, again, kind of the center of all of this is the athlete we know that uh, most of you uh, on the call today do what you're doing to help athletes reach the top level. So at the end of the day, this needs to work for your athletes and you need to engage them and make sure that they understand why they're doing uh, what you're asking them to do. So trying to tie that loop in at the end here with the athletes. So first things first here, just on this slide, this is again, the next two slides are a little bit boring, but I just wanted to highlight this quickly. As you can see, this is how the organization can be structured. So if you look at where it says conduct account executives, and then you've got men's basketball, and then you've got all of the teams underneath men's basketball, and then you've got men's swimming, this can be a hierarchical structure based on what suits your organization best. So whether you're an Olympic committee or an individual NSO, this would be slightly adjusted, obviously, depending on the, on the use case. Um, but as you can see here, if you were a coach responsible for the men's basketball team, um, and you existed at that top level organization, you would be able to see the national team plus all of the development teams underneath. But if you were a coach that needed to only see the U16 or U17 team as an example, and you exist in that organization, you only see those athletes. So that's just one way that we get around some of the, the concerns around what coaches should, should be seeing which uh, types of data. Um, again, another kind of boring slide here, but the whole, the whole site is set up with roles and permissions. And I just want to highlight this as well, because this will come up uh, in a few more slides, I think, as we go through. But this is where you can essentially build those different roles that exist within your organization. And these little lock icons on the right-hand side, that's really where you get into the permissions of those roles. So you would be able to turn on and off any functionality within the Conduct platform based on those permissions. Um, and that's actually done for two different reasons. One, Maybe you're a medical director and you need to have access to injury logs and you're a head coach and you shouldn't get access to injury logs. So you flick those on or off depending on what your role is. Um, but it also is allowing us to do the other component, which organizationally we know is a challenge is that fear of implementation. So what we can do is when we get started, we can bring somebody into the system, basically turn off everything except for what we really want them to be focused on to try to get rid of that fear of implementation. It's really easy walk through. You can really only do so much in the platform. So it's hard to make mistakes. And that tends to uh, grow the adoption that we see in the client. So that's just kind of a best practice, I think, uh, and something that our system helps support. Um, Jumping into some medical information here, and, and I'll give you some examples of the outputs here as well. 
Um, but one thing I just wanted to highlight is that if you were to go to an athlete's profile, which is kind of what we're looking at here, uh, or a subsection of their profile, and you were to click on the injury tab and create a new injury, this is the electronic medical records tool that we have. Again, it's only cut off a little bit. There's a lot more fields there down below. But one thing I just wanted to highlight is that if you're an athletic therapist or a medical director or somebody of that type of role uh, who needs to get access to either complete these or share them and view them, um, that's where you see that this drop down list where I've got the athletic trainer and medical director tagged, that's where that roles and permissions comes into play. Again, you choose which role should have access to this injury log. Um, no edits or changes can be made without a timestamp of when it was done, um, that type of information, obviously. And again, just a really simple workflow with the key things that you guys need as athletic therapists or medical directors. Um, what kinds of things are we looking to keep track of? Um, so all of that exists for them there. And then kind of the workflow is after you've logged an injury that an athlete has sustained, the next step is those follow-up treatments that you're doing on an athlete. So how can we improve that workflow? Because we know that um, athletic therapists spend a lot of their time writing notes um, and particularly writing notes at the end of the day. Um, so anything that we can do to save them time is obviously a huge value add for them. Um, and so this is a, a tool that we actually created with one of our uh, large NCAA clients. Uh, it's called our multi-logging treatment tool where it allows you to filter by either different teams, different athletes, different conditions. And potentially if some of the folks were coming in there for the same type of treatment, I use the example, just general maintenance. It's not an acute injury. They're just coming in to have a ice bath or a massage done. Um, this is a, a way that you can just quickly log all that information and it ties it back to that injury log that you've created. So it keeps a timestamp of all of that information for you. This is kind of where the medical piece kind of comes together. And this is just two really simple examples um, that I wanted to highlight, but you could have basically from that information that you've been inputting into the EMR tool and into the treatment tool, the treatment logging tool, you'll get an output that looks something like this, let's say as an example. And these are all completely customizable, but this is something that we see across a few organizations anyways, is getting an understanding of those total injuries who's been injured, how many times, what's their severity been, how did those injuries actually occur, what were the timelines of those injuries over the course of a year, how long did it take them to come back to play, how many games did they miss. All of that information can now be customized into a report that fits your organization and the goals that your organization has in terms of trying to improve um, the athlete care or the medical team's uh, response to injuries. We also talked earlier though about how you may also have those athletes that are going to play for a different team after they've competed with you. Um, so providing that simple one page exit medical report, here's the treatments that we performed on this athlete, here's all the soap notes, here's the dates of any surgeries that were performed, anything along those lines that can be a simple export single page PDF that you can share uh, with a particular team if you needed to. If we shift gears again a little bit more into the performance side of things rather than the medical side, I just wanted to highlight one thing really quickly here from uh, our form builder tool. So this is where when we talked about how do we get information from our athletes in a really efficient manner. So rather than going around with pen and paper and asking questions and logging it or, ask, or asking them to send you a text message and then you log it into Excel, this is where you can actually create the survey that you want them to fill out every morning or every week. Uh, and actually deliver it to them through the app. And you'll see those uh, images in a minute, but just wanted to highlight the, the logic that we have now available in Form Builder. Um, I've got an example here on the screen from the editing or building side of things. So did you train today? Yes or no? If they say yes, then what, they're, then what you're gonna ask them is what type of training did you do today? If they select the types of training that they did, you might wanna ask them what was your RPE for each of those types of sessions that you did today, et cetera. So you can have logic and nested logic based on the answers that you're, that you're asking. And I think a big part to tie this back um, to what we talked about with survey burnout or input burnout for athletes is this can be a way that you can only get them to fill out the questions that are relevant um, based on their situation that day. So did you train today? Yes or no? If they said no, then you skip the rest of the survey and they're finished. If they say yes, that's when you, ex you expand it and you show them more options. So again, it leads to better athlete buy-in, uh, we feel, and it also provides um, your staff a lot more flexibility in terms of what you're trying to collect. 
this also isn't only for the athlete to complete. This also could be more from a medical perspective as well. So maybe you're looking at uh, upper body impingements or lower body impingements, and you want to be able to have logic based on whether they have something or not, then you want to give more in, uh, in depth detail. Um, this is just another example. We talk a lot about how Excel is used or Google Sheets are used to store this information a lot of the time. Um, and this is just an example of how our tool inside of the platform essentially is, is created to become your Excel spreadsheet. So this is what we call a multi-user form where you can collect or uh, excuse me, select multiple athletes and complete any type of information that you want to be completing. This is an example of a sweat rate analysis. So we've, we have dietitians on the call or nutritionists, they might be interested in this. But this could also be for fitness testing. This could be for um, a movement screen. It could be for a myriad of different other uh, uh, examples as well. Um, so it's just a really flexible tool. It's all completely customizable, again, based on what you guys need to collect and, and what's important to the organization from a, a tracking standpoint. And then the last way that we would also get in uh, information into the system is through our integrations. I mentioned again, we have those 50 plus integration partners. We've got one uh, listed here with Push, um, who some of you may use. Um, but what's really nice is that once you've set up the integration the first time, um, it's going to tell you, hey, there's been a user that name hasn't matched up, so you can make that fix really quickly, um, as well as it's gonna automatically pull data at a certain time every day. So most of our integrations generally run automatically at around three in the morning um, to make sure that they pull that previous day's information into the platform so that when you log in in the morning, you've got your most up-to-date info. Um, you can also pull on demand, as you can see from that menu option that I have uh, shown, it says pull now. So you could pull right after a session for the last 24 hours, bring in that information directly after the session finished as well. Um, and just to highlight some of those solutions that the performance team would be looking at, um, we've got a ton of different examples of this, and I just threw in two that I think cover a few of the core topics that I wanted to touch on. But as you can see in the player dashboard on the left, this is where you see the integration of those multiple data sources. You see Connexon, which is kind of that RFID tracking system. You've got Aura, which is the ring that's tracking their sleep and HRV and readiness. Um, you've got their box scores, so maybe that's where you've got an integration with your box stats provider and you want to pull in what their shooting percentages were and things like that. And then you've also got the option to start viewing their wellness information. So different buttons that you can click in to see more in-depth information. Um, there's also a schedule or, or a, a schedule here where you could see different teams that are your upcoming schedules, whether it's practices or games. So lots of flexibility, I guess, in terms of how you want to uh, showcase that information. This is just a common one that we see, particularly actually with our MBA clients. Um, on the right, we've actually got more of that integration specific report. So this is the example of if you're using some sports technology equipment, this is an example of Hawk and force plates. Um, you could look at what are the asymmetries between your right and left legs? What are your results uh, compared to yourself all time or compared to your peers? And then have a color coordinated based on that. Or even the option that you see down below with the orange and blue um, graphs there, that's essentially highlighting any results that fall outside of a standard deviation. So again, notifying the user um, where and when they need to intervene and giving them that notification uh, in an efficient manner. Um, now we're going to just jump into a couple things in regards to the more of the coaching staff. Um, it's what I refer to it as more of your, your player coaches, your, your sport coaches. This is um, something that we see a lot of, is what we call our compliance dashboard. So we've got two of these player cards uh, flipped over here. As you can see, Aaron McDonald is all up to date. He has all of his K, uh, KPIs um, collected in the appropriate time frame. But you can see Jeff Smith to the right is missing a few of those things that they need to be collecting. Um, the great thing about the compliance dashboard here that I just wanted to mention is that depending on what your role is in the organization, you can see different key performance indicators. So if I'm a head coach, I might be interested in very different things than if I was a performance coach or a medical staff member. Um, so again, depending on what you guys care about seeing, that can be individualized uh, for your role. And even on top of that, each individual metric can be based around a different time frame. So if we require our athletes to have a body fat test done once a month, well, once 30 days has passed, 
they're going to become non-compliant. And that's my, um, that's my reminder as a staff member to do that uh, body fat test as that example. Or alternatively, you want them to fill out what their sleep quality is every morning. And so if they don't fill it out that day, you see that they're non-compliant and you just remind the athlete to, to get on it. The reason that this is really important, again, from an organizational standpoint, is that if you're going to spend all this time trying to implement a strategy and an approach to how you're monitoring athletes, you need to make sure that you're staying consistent with it. And this is just a really easy way to stay consistent, make sure you're not missing any of those data points. And then the last one here, I think that we're gonna go through from a coach reference standpoint, as we talked about before, how um, we wanna look at who can practice, who can play today, who's available, who's not. So if I skip back to the last tab, you'll see that there's those little status flags on the bottom right, whether they're red, yellow, or green. If you were to click on one of those flags, let's say I was coach and I wanted to see a little bit more info, I can click on Evan's status, see any of those notes that are associated with it. Again, this is generally where we see our athletic therapists introduce this into their daily workflows, where they say, every morning I'm gonna log in and make sure that I update where everybody's uh, rehab is at. And again, this is information for the coaches to digest, not the in-depth soap notes maybe that uh, you would normally be taking and sharing with your medical team. So again, changing the type of information that you're displaying so that it makes sense to the group that's generally accessing it is a really key part of, of what we look at here when it comes to athlete status. Tying this stuff together for a tactical coaching team, I've got a couple examples here. There's lots of others, obviously. Um, but this is where you could look at something on the left here. We've got player readiness with that battery uh, gauge, which could be made up of a bunch of different metrics um, and some algorithm around that. Um, you could have that box stats information or maybe some key metrics from that last game, whether it's passing accuracy or top speed. Um, and same thing on the right here with fitness testing. You might want to see a, a review of where does my team sit right now? Who are the top performers? Who are the weakest performers? Where do we need to have certain people improve? and giving that information to the coaches so that they have more insight into why you're doing what you're trying to do with the athletes is really, really important as well. So that's just an example of a fitness test report on the right. And we're getting near the end here. So I just wanna give you guys um, a quick chance to maybe just take a breath for a second before we jump into it. I want you guys to be thinking about some questions. Um, keep writing them in the chat. Uh, they won't be, I don't believe they're shown to the entire group, just to the uh, moderators of the, the webinar. So definitely write them in there and we'll try to get to those at the end as well. Um, so I talked about earlier how we kind of wanted to finish on the athlete experience. Um, we realized that at the core, particularly at the Olympic level where they're, uh, the majority of them are amateur athletes, this is where, this is where it becomes really important. How can we... Um, a, get buy-in from our athletes? How can we be um, prove to them that we're here for their best interests? We're not just trying to collect data for the sake of collecting data. Um, and how can we make this a really streamlined and efficient process for the athlete? Because we know that they're busy and they've got lots of demands throughout their day as well. Um, so again, trying to make this really, really simple is important. So you've got a couple of screenshots here. One, you'll see kind of what's my upcoming schedule today? Do I have a training program assigned to me to complete today? Do I have to fill out some type of wellness questionnaire? Um, those are just two examples of, you know, how you would fill out a wellness questionnaire, whether it was logic based or not. Um, you can also do things such as integrate your Apple health kit. So if you wanted the, if the athlete was interested in looking at their sleep and rather than having to plug in their sleep manually, they just want to, uh, hook up to the Apple health kit. They've got that ability at their fingertips as well to start looking at some data. Like you might see on the right here, a really simplistic chart of what their average heart rate's been over time or what their average sleep has been. But what's most exciting, I think, and what I'm really excited to show you guys today, too, is we've got some updates um, that recently came out that give us the ability to create much more in-depth reports um, for those high-performance athletes that are looking for that type of information. So as you can see on this first screen, after we've maybe completed some type of survey that you need them to collect, it can say, hey, submit and view report. Um, as they do that, it will take them directly into a Tableau mobile-based report, as you can see on the right here. Um, that can be much more in depth, obviously, than what you saw in that previous slide. So this is where you really can start building that buy-in and engagement with the athletes. And I think it's also really important to highlight that how you present this information to an athlete is also of utmost importance. Um, if you present this information to them and they perceive it as they're getting worse at something, that can lead to a lot of anxiety 
and you need to make sure that um, you know if you're creating undue uh, uh, anxiety around some of the data that you're collecting, that's obviously having a negative impact. Um, so again, being able to customize this and tailor it so that it makes sense to the athlete and it's in a way that isn't going to cause them any type of anxiety is really, really important. Um, this last one that you can see on the right here is just a mobile view of that report that we showed you earlier with the Connexone, Aura data, wellness, uh, box stats, all of that stuff. Now it's in a mobile view. So whether you're a coach or an athlete, you can actually get access to that as well. So I think that just about wraps it up. We've got a couple other, oh, last thing I wanted to kind of close the loop on is we've showed them the information and the last step is now they need to complete the actual workout maybe or the program that you've assigned to them. This is where they see that in their schedule. Hey, what exercise am I supposed to do? How much weight should I be using? Um, and the nice thing that I just want to highlight here as well is we've actually seen groups use this in a, in a number of different ways. So whether you're doing this for a strength program or a rehab program, or if you want to upload your own videos or clips that you have access to, whether it's from YouTube or your own computer, you could actually kind of set up an educational program even. So maybe it's just an article or a video that you want them to watch to help them with sleep strategies or um, some interesting interview with a top athlete in their sport, something along those lines. So lots of different ways that you can actually deliver programs through Conduct as well. Um, I believe that's going to take me just about to the end here. So I might throw this back over to Kevin and see if he wants to jump through any of the questions uh, that came through. Um, we do have a couple questions. Uh, one, uh, I think more kind of a combination of a, uh, I guess, a comment and a question. Uh, the, the comment being, you know, a big limiting factor to consider uh, is, uh, a way to encapsulate all of an NSO's data collection pieces while also having it being able to be pulled into a, a centralized national database and then also, you know, kind of keeping privacy and security uh, top of mind. And so I think that's really more of a, a comment, but, uh, you know, just something else that uh, we need to think about. And I think, you know, that's where you know, some of the things that we do with roles and permissions and, and APIs, uh, you know, kind of help uh, with that. And it's it's a great question actually to bring up as well because it's something that we're um, definitely looking in, and looking for partners to, to help with that kind of project as well in the sense that we know that a lot of groups are working with their maybe it's a national program um, and maybe they obviously belong to an Olympic committee as well um, the the transfer of data through those different sites is a really important factor as you're talking about so kind of creating that data vault for an athlete and how that could follow them through a different organization is really important but the same almost concept applies even when you're thinking of an individual organization. Um, let's just say you're a, the Canada basketball, just as an example, and you've got a talent pool of your high performance athletes that are actually Olympic athletes, but then you've got your talent pool of, of these kind of more grassroots or, or provincial programs that um, are part of your organization, but the athletes themselves aren't necessarily part of the high performance program yet. We're actually able to, quickly standardize an approach to how you're collecting information on that lower level athletes so that as they go through the process and as they grow up, um, you've got a good database uh, available and you've been able to see the trajectory of that athlete and things of that nature. So two different ways to look at it, whether you're looking at, you know, athletes way down the downstream or you're an organization that's trying to pump information up to an Olympic committee, it kind of works both ways. So we definitely have solutions and we're excited to definitely show any of those off if, if you are interested. Uh, then another one there, more on, I guess, the nutrition side of things, looking at how uh, I can uh, integrate with, uh, I'm probably gonna pronounce this incorrectly, chrono <laughs> chronometer, uh, which yeah. is a, a meal tracking app, uh, and bringing that data into the platform and, uh, and then potentially also connecting in with meal planning software. Yeah, so um, I've definitely heard of that. I don't know how to pronounce it probably properly either, but I've heard of that system, um, particularly with our Olympic groups as well. Um, and there's actually, we've seen two different opportunities here. So one is we do have the ability, obviously, to build integrations as a company here at Conduct. We've done it, uh, you know, 50 plus times. Um, getting them up the priority list is kind of the, the challenge right now is there's so many tools that exist. It's trying to get it up the list. Um, but with that in mind, we either build integrations with those products or those products often have an ability to actually export data into an Excel spreadsheet. 
And depending on what that export looks like, it can actually be a fairly quick adjustment to the file to then upload into the Conduct platform so that that information does live with your athletes as well. Now, I don't want to speak for anybody here, and I haven't seen the export for that product in particular, um, but there's a few different ways that we can do that. Um, we also have seen some kind of workaround solutions where um, you can pull that into an Excel file. We can write in our script that's maybe pulling it in automatically, things of that nature. So depending on where you're at, I guess, in terms of your uh, knowledge or expertise level, we've got a few different options that can help with that. You're around uh, more some of the scheduling uh, display uh, pieces that we had and uh, really just looking at support of how that would support a, a multi-day tournament uh on an athlete's schedule, not just one game at a time. And, and you know, what that might look like, is that possible? Yeah, that's a really good question actually. And it probably is worth exploring a little bit more specifically, I guess. Um, but I think what I'll say is that in terms of how we're displaying the schedule, let's say on one of those Tableau reports that we were looking at, Tableau is extremely flexible in how we actually um, showcase or visualize data. So what I would say is that one, if, if you were looking to see a schedule, you know, what's happening on the same day, certainly you have the ability to build that within Tableau, assuming that the data is collected. Um, and if it's referring more to the schedule on the athletes app itself, um, you can definitely have multiple um, events happening on the same day. So whether that's a survey to complete a training program, and maybe you want to highlight that they've got some event coming up as well, there is the, the ability to kind of do that uh, within the app as well. I'm not sure if that totally answers the question, but I would definitely welcome whoever asked it to, to reach out directly and I could maybe dive in more in depth too. Uh, yeah, just some other questions here uh, as they come in. Um, one here, uh, we have some aspects of athlete monitoring in place around data collection and reporting. Is Conduct able to offer the, only the pieces we need to complete the picture or do we need to buy the whole thing? <laughs> um, it's a good question. I suppose we could definitely explore what that looks like. Um, if you've got the um, the monitoring and collection stuff down pat, um, we do have open APIs available. So if you've got the correct secure credentials, you can actually um, grab information from a different platform and pull it into Conduct to do some of the more in-depth reporting if that's one of the requirements that you have. Um, so yeah, we've definitely worked with groups um, that are working with different systems but need a better system at the top level to drive all of that information up and then um, aggregate it, analyze it in a more in-depth way using something like Tableau. Our sport requires constant monitoring of athlete weight in order to ensure they meet their weight class. Uh, is this something that can be done through Conduct as well? Yeah, so that's actually a great question. Um, and we get that a lot, obviously, from the kind of the nutrition side of an organization. And as you can see uh, over this shoulder, I guess there's a Gatorade logo up on the wall. Um, that's actually a really exciting project that we've done. Actually, here's another Gatorade product next to me, the Gatorade sweat patch, which is kind of tied to that whole project. Um, but we've got a couple different solutions when it comes to weight and hydration. So I mentioned the Gatorade thing because it's a product or excuse me, a project that we completed. I don't know when that was two years ago, something like that. Um, and so now what we've been able to do is actually, uh, we have a, a scale system where it uses a, a Bluetooth scale, comes with a tablet and a tablet stand uh, with a software on the tablet as well. So that when the athlete comes into the locker room or the facility, they stand on the scale, they click their face, they input a pin, it automatically shows them what their way in was. They go and complete their workout and then after the workout, they come back and they weigh out and it's going to tell them, here's how much fluid you lost. Here's your dehydration percentage. Here's what you should be drinking to um, recuperate essentially or make up for that um, fluid that you lost. So all of that information is like done in one system with the GX product, which is great. Um, but the other option as well is just through Form Builder to create a simple way in, way out form where you can just plug it in as if it's an Excel spreadsheet and then populate any of those uh, reports. I think that might cover all of the questions. Is that the note that I'm getting, Kevin? Questions we have uh, for today's session. Perfect. So I think that basically does it. I just want to say thanks again to everybody for joining. Um, hopefully I didn't talk too fast. 
Uh, I've been living in this world for a long time now. So some of this stuff seems really obvious to me maybe, and I cover it too quickly. So uh, like I've been saying, please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you want to get more information on any of those things that I talked about, um, or if you'd like a more in-depth demonstration of the actual system itself. Um, because I understand that the workflows and, and seeing the actual nitty gritty is really important. So I definitely want to offer that up to anybody who's interested. Um, but yeah, just thanks again, everybody for joining. Uh, I think we had a pretty good turnout. So we're excited that you guys made it to the first one and excited to hopefully see you guys for the, for the second one, whatever that may be. And I don't know if there's a... Uh...